And welcome to episode 220 of PCP, the Pagan Standard Podcast. I'm Dave. I'm Amber. I'm Brandon. I'm Normal. Also joining us tonight are... I'm Nice. <laughs> Epic fail. <laughs> well, there's an Amanda a Barrett. Uh, somewhere along the line, there's a Miles. Uh, Hello. <laughs> <Rio. Who's? laughs> Okay, and then, then then there's a couple other people who apparently don't want to talk. <laughs> All I right. just did, but we and Naria, me and Naria did the same thing. High five. <laughs> Woo! So there's some announcements before we get to our first commercial break. I want to give some kudos out to Cauldron Radio out on Live365.com for making pagan people a regular part of their schedule. You can listen to Cauldron Radio at Live365.com. That's Live365, the number is 365.com. Or listen to Pagan People anytime on paganpeople.info. Also, uh, while we're talking about people that are awesome, Forest Moon Grove. Uh, Circle Sanctuary usually gets a lot of credit for uh, pagans in the military stuff, and they do a lot of cool stuff. But Forest Moon Grove certainly deserves a, a lot of attention for what they do. Uh, it was started by a guy who was uh, serving in the military during the Iraq conflict to uh, accommodate the needs of uh, pagans from within. And now he's working from the outside of... Uh, of the military to help uh, build a support network for pagans in the military. And uh, you can check out their website at forestmoon.spurz.com. Now, if you want to learn more about the Forest Moon Grove, uh, Lamika Lamika's Wiccan podcast did two episodes about this organization, both of which are awesome to listen to. You can listen to episodes 36 and 76 of Lamika's Wiccan podcast. And we'll have links to that in the show notes. Uh, we'll get to what we're here about tonight. Other kin and the power of names right after these messages. You're listening to the Pagan Centered Podcast, bringing unique and intelligent perspective to the masses using contemporary technology, allowing for free discussion of one's personal beliefs and enlightenment of those not familiar with a particular religion. We bring to the forefront many issues that are ignored or shunned upon by mainstream religion. We discuss topics on a religious and non-religious level as they relate to our panel representing varied belief systems. Our brute honesty and candid opinion has made us one of the longest-running and most popular pagan podcasts. Feel welcome to call in live or submit listener feedback via our website, PaganCenteredPodcast.com. And we're back. Names. Names. True names. So, so there's a lot of lore and superstition that surrounds names. Some people think it's a bunch of BS. Some people take it very seriously. Uh, one place that you see the topic of names come up a lot is true names versus craft names in uh, Wicca. You know, the, the so-called gateway religion to paganism. Um, wow, there's a lot of weird stuff going on in our chat room right now. Um, <laughs> There's files flying around and every, everything. Uh, so, true names in witchcraft traditions and Wicca. Uh, usually, the lore surrounding this is, is uh, as far as I know, and I, my understanding of it is that you have a name and it's assigned to you by the divine, at least according to these traditions. And this is the name you use to work with the divine when working with the divine. Uh, you might share this with people you do some intimate uh, metaphysical workings with, but it's not something to just be willy-nilly shared about, used as a, a you know, like a, a nickname on a chat room or a forum or something like that. Uh, it's 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 got sacred. It's of a sacred nature because it has power to it, and names and power are kind of tied to another one another, such that you know. Uh, there's some lore that if you know someone or something's name, you can have control over it, at least some more control over it, or at least it gives you some kind of metaphysical leverage. Sort of like Voodoo or um, the idea of something like that, sorry. If you have something of somebody's, like a piece of hair. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, it's Something that amazing. idea of it is part, it is you, it is part of you, thus you can use it to, um, actually, Control. most, yeah, most, um, most times I hear about it in movies and stuff is dealing with demons, um, or even, um, 
just general summoning. If you know something's true name, you can summon it, um, or and vice versa, control it. Um, but sorry, I just no, had a weird thought of from still. No, that, 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 that ties very much. Into, that kind of conveys the point very well. I mean, that, that is yeah. kind of why people are so. Uh, paranoid about sharing names because they do feel that names have that power. Now, some do not believe that names have that kind of power, and they just share their name willy-nilly, whatever they think it is. Well, if you think about it, even in the terms of dealing with normal people, if you go into a room that has 40, 50 people in it, and say, I want Dave's attention... If I didn't know his name and I was just like, hey, hey, you, you, over there. Right. <laughs> Rather, if I said, hey, Dave, and then, unless there are yeah. 40, 50 people named Dave, <laughs> you wouldn't know who I'm referring to. I've had that problem at work. Well, Mike, please come up to the customer service. Well, we have four mics in the store. Which one do you want? Well, Raven, please report the information to Exactly. <laughs> the joke, if you want to meet chicks at a pagan festival, you have them announce over the PA, well, Raven and Morgan, please come to information, and like 65 people come running up. <laughs> Usually your name should be something a little uh, less generic. <laughs> uh. I think that's usually my only... Um, my only gripe with when it comes to people putting a lot of power to names is the, that idea of there are how many people, souls, whatever you're looking to call, and only one thing has that name ever, or it doesn't go by multiple names, Mm -hmm. so... I am I am guilty of being one of those people where I'm like, names are just a name. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah, but you know, since since this is our our I don't even know how we convey the mathematical formula for this, but this has been forty five episodes since our last other kin episode, so it's other kin time. Um <laughs> you know, tying this into that, that general construct, um a lot of people that are that believe that they are incarnated at, of, you know, here. Um, they believe if they just look up their true name and figure that out, that somehow that will unlock all of their memories and the world will be a better place for them. Mm, again, not really considering, well, in different lifetimes, you have different names. You might go by multiple names. This might be this. This might be that. It gets a little more complicated than you might really think. If I unlocked all the memories of all my past lives at once, I'd be having a serious personality crisis. Or a mental nuclear meltdown. Yeah, I know. Schizophrenia, anybody? <laughs> Actually, it's not the correct term. Um, what was the correct term for the psychological condition of split personality? I mean, they, they say schizo, but really it's not. Like it's catatonia or something. Uh, disassociative personality yeah. disorder. Yeah. Ooh, that was yeah. in stereo. That was good. <laughs> Or as a associate of mine used to call it, he was a hat rack. <laughs> that actually makes sense. That's funny. Try that's having a that as a classmate. Hat rack. But I think one thing that's interesting uh, to bring up is that um, you'll notice in the the pagan the overlap where you got pagans that are other kin. There is a distinction between craft name and true name. And this is actually becoming more and more of a mainstream pagan concept that there is a difference between a craft name and a true name. And I don't know. This is just our habit of just con- just if there's a nuance that can be split into two different camps, we will do it as pagans. But um, <laughs> the the thing is, you know, with craft names, you know, a lot of especially again with Wicca, it was a lot of it generates from the Wiccan dogma of, you know, you gotta go by a false name, you gotta be afraid of persecution, blah, 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 blah. So you gotta, you gotta have a, uh, what do they call it, gnome de plume? A uh, secondary name to go by. And this way you can communicate with one another, get each other's attention, and, and communicate accurately in, like, 
coordinating things with individuals, but without using people's legal names. It's an alias. Exactly. Well, that that's one of the whole again the beauties of being online is that you've got people that are able to do that. We've we've got people in our community that can't if they put their real name out there, they're going to have some serious problems. And as long as they don't pick something that's just so horrendously stupid that I have I snort drinks out of my nose if I hear it, which you know of course is inherently rude, <laughs> I'm good with that. Lady Pixie Moon Drip. <laughs> Thank I'd you. Like to see that. That would be funny. <laughs> what, see me snorting stuff out of my nose? Only if only if the person who told you their name was right in front of you, I mean. Um, that's actually happened before, and I hate to say this, but um, lot of double latte something or other with extra nutmeg does not come out of silk well. Ooh. <laughs> there would have been a camera there that have validated that moment. I only wish. Mm. I gonna- have heard that the... Um, and this was way, way back, that the reason that there were, were craft names is because your spiritual identity was, your craft name was supposed to embody your spiritual identity, was which was supposed to be separate from your normal identity. It didn't really go into persecution, blah, 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 but they tried to make it as a it's because your spiritual self should be different from your physical self. And that name is just to designate that. Or as we like to do it in more generic metaphysics, psychodrama. (laughs) I mean, it is putting yourself in a different headspace. Yeah. There is something to be said, too, for using it as a statement and a focus of... I I hate to overuse... I hate to use the word transformative because it seems like it's so overused. But um, one of the groups that I hung with a bit some time back... If you were a newbie, you were supposed to choose a name, not that just sounded really, really, really cool and went well with your, you know, your sequined robe, but it was supposed to be a name that didn't just say something about where you were at right then. It was supposed to be a name that said something about where you wanted to be or where you wanted to go. And I thought their approach was their approach was kind of neat. It uh, it put a little bit of a different spin on what people you know what people thought about themselves. Oh yeah, there's there's definitely that, and, and some traditions will go as far as enforcing that if you're going to take on a name, you better research the where mm-hmm. that name came from. Do your homework. Yeah. Right. But. You know, the, the, again, this might explain the phenomenon that we see, especially among Wiccans, that probably pisses off a lot of Reconstructionists, which is Wiccans taking on the names of deities as their craft names. Uh, yeah, that's kind of... Don't do that. Yeah. It sounds like a really... sounds like you're setting yourself up for an ass-kicking. That's not how I choose to offend deities. <laughs> <laughs> nice, Kirby. I can't. I have heard people say that it is a form of respect, that they feel that they are channeling that deity, but as far as I'm aware, and if I'm incorrect, somebody please correct me, but the idea behind taking a deity name was always, back then, you are the chosen of that deity. You are the blessed of that deity. You are, and it included the deity's name. You didn't say, I am the walking whatever insert name of random goddess here. Because that was very disrespectful and acting to get, asking to get bitch slapped. Yeah. I mean, I've heard of people that, I actually like people that are devotees of a particular deity within um, polytheism that will take the name such and such deity daughter or such and such son. Yeah. Or such and such child, something like that. To me, that's that's respectful as well as giving props and possibly also trying to borrow some of the attributes of that deity to improve yourself. Yeah, I can gro- I can grok that. Yeah, it's humility. Yes. When a humility doesn't always necessarily go over perfectly well with with people when it comes to names too. I mean, I aside from some of the the 
fascinating and interesting individuals that have had I've had discussions with over the name that I use, which is not a craft name. It's a nickname that actually had to do with being a wildlife ha- rehabber that I've had for decades. But the craft name that I've used on online boards where it was sort of the, the requested way to go was mulch. And quite frankly, I can't think of a more powerful craft name to use. But humility is not necessarily a strong point with some of the people that want to go there. I think humility is not a strong point in a lot of people's snooze. <laughs> and humility. the level, I think the, the level of grandiosity, there's a new word for you, or audaciousness like of the name says something as well about the person's level of humility or hubris. <clears throat> I'd actually like to do something. Let's actually define the term humility and hubris. Humility is what happens when you have a lot of water vapors suspended in the air. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it oh, wait really a minute. Is. Crap. Wait a minute. All right. I'm sorry. My bad. I was just thinking about it. I mean, that's the word that's thrown around a lot, and everybody thinks they know what it means, and I'm... Not, not to sound like I'm nitpicking here, but every once in a while, just like, let's let's define this. It is the well, inverse of thinking that you are all-powerful and all-knowing and flawless. I, well... <clears throat> okay, so humility is me understanding that I'm about 200 and some odd pounds of protein matter on a planet that I can't think of how big around off the top of my head. That okay. is... Thank you. Good that one. is circling around one star that's like one of a hundred million or some BS like that. I can't remember. Let's call it a hundred gajillion. Th- yeah. Gosh, actually, I forget how many is how many is in this galaxy. It's like a million billion or something like that. Something like that, yeah. Oh, Two hundred million in this galaxy. Two hundred million. Okay, cool. Exactly. Awesome. That l- that's going to be in existence for, well, although highly doubtful in my case, we'll say probably a maximum of 120 years, probably more like 60, though, for me. So, humility is understanding that I am all this, correct? Mm-hmm. Cool. No, you know, backwards, humility is knowing that you are not as grand as somebody else might be or not as big as the world around you. Hubris is a exaggerated pride and self-confidence. Excellent. I think I'm guilty of that one. But, I don't know, I, I just, I see, a lot of times I see the word humility thrown around just like one of them charge words, like it's like a selling point. Like uh, the hmm. service that they say they offer, but they don't really. This, this tradition has fifty percent more humility. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's like it's like the character Mrs. Van Dyne and um, and then the Diary of Anne Frank, where she tells Anne, "You should be more modest and unassuming, like me." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, what piece of work! One well, of the risks, I think, of hubris is that a person who bears himself with much hubris, with their exaggerated pride or self-confidence, is a bit like a man who walks across a a height rope over a crowd and every single person in the crowd has a slingshot. If If he gets too bold and too arrogant, he is going to fall, then he'll be a victim of his own hubris. Awesome. Okay, now that we've defined these, we can move along. I just, it's like, you know, <laughs> everyone, there, 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 there's, a few, there's a few of the words I got, but there's some words I honestly think need to be defined every time they're used in a book. Humility is one of them. I'm not going to argue there. Right. Okay. I'm happy now. And now we'll resume the 220th book in the PCP <laughs> audio series. <laughs> 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 oh, 
I think that's actually a good thing to do is defining your is defining a term like that. Like you said, I mean, I know I absolutely have no humility, but I know it. So <laughs> I don't know. You're blunt. Um, you're that's not if humility. Descri- if I had to describe you as a texture, you'd be kind of like a Gallagher mallet hitting a watermelon. I mean. Well, yeah, but I'd put plastic down first <laughs> so that nobody had to clean it up. And I would bring plates and forks. Actually, that would be a good reason Good reason to go to a front row seat at a Gallagher thing. Exactly. Take a date there. Say, hey, we're going for lunch. So that tangent aside. Topic? What Topic. <laughs> I don't need no stinking topic. <laughs> I just wander through here. Scurvy's brain for a while. Segway says, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so on a topic of humility and hubris and all this, uh, the pompous acquisition of rank in one's alias. Lord, Lady, King. <laughs> Lady <Warren>. Grom. <laughs> But, Sorry, if, if you walk up to me and you start your name with one of those words, you have yeah. lost some street cred with me. I am Lord Majestic Purple Fuzzy Pants. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> quite buying it, you know? Lord Roxor. First and best way to get me to not address <laughs> you in any respectful fashion is to look at me and say, excuse me, that was Lady something something. Yeah. And I've, I've had a couple people correct me on that, and I've just had to look at them and go, not your trad. I'm not sure which one is funnier, though, is the people <laughs> that demand that I've met that demanded to be called Lord or Lady without even bothering to find out if I was any trad or in much less their trad, which means I owe them nothing mm-hmm. except common civility, are people that have actually corrected me and insisted that to prove that I had self-esteem and standing to uphold the dignity of the office that I must refer to myself as Lady News Possum. <laughs> <laughs> and I... Th- think that if you are a Hoffman priest or if you are a bishop or if you are some elevated standing of clergy and acknowledged as such by others who look up to you for counsel and such, then yes, you can have the word Lord or Lady something. Um, it, it does bestow a rank. i can be yeah, arrogant, um, but if I, example, meet a member of the Christian clergy, I don't call him father because he's not my father. I'm of a different faith. I'll call him sir as a note of respect, but not father. And if a, if some, if some pagan priest has the, the name of, let's say. Um, Lord Winter Drake. I I might call him Winter Drake, but since I'm not a member of his group, Carbon Grove, whichever, I don't think I owe him the Lord prefix. I say, if they say their name is Lord such and such, Hmm? just say, do you have a castle? No. (laughs) Walk away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's his name? Eddie. Eddie. Is there a done claiming land? Oh, yeah? Do you have a flag? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the <laughs> funny flag? thing is... Eddie Izzard. Yeah, Eddie Izzard. Mm-hmm. The funny thing is there's so many of the, the pagans out there that will... Miles brought up the, the Catholic priest being called Father, there's so many out there that will say how screwed up that is that they take the name Father and what does that mean? And yet these are the same damn people that are taking the names of yeah. Lord and Lady in their titles. Mm-hmm. Well, we mm. haven't had a good Godwin on this show in probably a hundred episodes. So, you know who else did this? <laughs> No, Dave! Who else did this? this? Tell us, tell us. The Nazis. <laughs> In their religious circles, they would uh, actually they would actually acquire the rank. 
they would, they would either pull like Lord or or something, that, and they'll even change their their um, names to use aliases so that it would instead of having some puny sounding last name, they would have something that like sound like deep and powerful. <laughs> Oh, they just did that because Sir Winston Churchill said they were rabble and on a radio broadcast at some point, and they figured they needed to catch up. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. So, so next time you hear someone say introduce themselves as Lord Fluffabunny, um, <laughs> ask them if they're a Nazi. <laughs> Done. Dave, I would like to take this opportunity to tell you that I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, who's a neo-Nazi? <laughs> 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 Lord Funny Bunny? Yes! Lord okay. High All Fluffy Pants. All Hail Fluffy Pants? Okay. okay. <laughs> if you want a name that, that, ins- that actually inspires a sense of imposing power, you should have, have a name that describes something that people can get their brain around but it actually is a big powerful name like it might be I am Lord Rocket Propelled Chainsaw Launcher <laughs> Hell, I want one of those <laughs> right? I've, I've seen the plans for a Rocket Propelled Chainsaw Launcher Don't mess with those Nazis hmm? <laughs> Is, 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 is that Rocket Propelled or is the Rocket the, propeller, or the, what is the no, chainsaw launcher the, rocket propeller? The chainsaw, the individual chainsaw, has fins and rocket boosters on the back where it would normally have your handle, and the giant bazooka-looking barrel thing launches these at great speed with blade going. How awesome is that? <laughs> That's oh, pretty yeah. epic. <laughs> that has so much to do with names and other kids. <laughs> no, names. I don't know. I think it. Ha- I think it might actually require another kid to design that. <laughs> Good segue. Well, okay, I just want to touch on something before. Uh, when the Nazis used Lord and Ladies kind of stuff, they were actually having a rank, and therefore it made more sense. Just wanted to put that out there. Now, a lot of people like to self-rank themselves, though. Yeah, they didn't and earn the, their rank. That, that's kind of where the, the main point of this is that they yeah. they just made up a rank. True. The fact that they eventually overthrew the government while I'm running the country is completely beside the point. We don't need to talk about that, Dave. <laughs> Power of positive thinking as applied by Nazis. <laughs> da, da, da. Now, now that you've completely, totally worked over Lord Godwin. <laughs> Poor guy. I'm going to go get him a beer. I don't know. I think he just got to reach around more. <laughs> wonder, do we have to censor that word? Godwin or reach around? Reach around. No. He was just reaching around his waist. That's obviously what you're talking about. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll buy that. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I just put it next to my bridge. <laughs> my seafront, my uh, beachfront property in Arizona. <laughs> yeah, Arizona really isn't all that far from a beach. Yeah, Don't encourage him. <laughs> Some parts of Arizona are less than an hour from the beach. On an ocean, kind of. <laughs> Moving along. The power of renaming someone. So we had some fun with this last year. Actually, almost exactly a year ago. Gamma. Yep. Yeah, I'm still fixing damage to my RV. See, this way you can take all that negative energy and attribute it into an entity that you are crafting. Wasn't that what turned the Hulk green and mean? I'm seeing a pattern there. (laughs) 
He had plenty of green beans. Hulk smash. Hulk smash. <laughs> I think it's even funnier if you've ever had Twisted Mega Theater. But yeah, sometimes it, it's, it, it can be fun to rename someone you don't like. Just oh, no, wait a minute. I didn't know we were talking about renaming people we don't like. Hell, let's go for that. <laughs> It's to rename yourself or to rename other people. Other people. I don't have the right to rename other people unless I do it behind their backs. Oh, Piffle, we do it all the time. Who is that guy that we started calling the Right Reverend Poopy Pants? There's one of our volunteers that kept, that well, was supposed to be a volunteer. <laughs> yeah. a list of those. Take a number. Yeah, but that name caught on and people are still using it. So I think it, has, I think it actually has magical renaming. significance. Oh yeah, Star. Speaking of uh, your neighborhood, I, Dave was wondering, and as was some of us, um, there's some people that started up a wicked podcast, and we think they're from your neck of the woods. Do you happen to know them? Huh? <clears throat> there's uh, some people that started up a uh, podcast from your area. Who who were they, Dave? I don't know. I try to steer clear of most of the people in my area right now because I've got, like, you know... Oh, Storm and Sorsha. Hmm. Who is it? Storm and Sorsha? The only Sorsha I know lives in lives in um, um, Brighton. In England, yeah. Yeah, Chap's girlfriend that does the really killer Terry Pratchett illustrations. I, but I'm, I don't know... Storm and Sasha podcast. Uh, wicked podcast. Wickedpodcast.com. Wicked. No idea. Huh. Random side note. Well, that tangent will get edited out. <laughs> well, I mean, the really cool, the really significant thing is, is it like, you know, if it's cool, I want to hear it. Cricket, cricket, no cricket, comment. cricket. <laughs> so, so, no comment. <laughs> yeah. no, I don't know. I mean, you know, there's there probably is. There are a lot of people in our area that, in spite of Charlotte being as big as it is, just don't connect up. Well, uh, we we just thought you might have known them because the reason they started podcasting is because they were sick and tired of the drama in the local painting community. Which has <laughs> right. Yeah, we we figured you'd have strong relations with them one way or the other. I like them already. We may be part of what they're sick of, but I like them already. <laughs> Brandon, you wanted to say something? Oh no, I was going back to the the topic of the difference between nicknames and renaming somebody. Oh man, how bad derailed are we that Brandon's bringing us back on topic? <laughs> Hey, every once in a while I do this. <laughs> Brandon and I did that for a whole episode once. Hurry, before yeah. the topic goes away. But no, I was... Uh, <clears throat> on some occasion, the uh, nickname actually has some significance. I know that I got the nickname Bear back in elementary school, and it still sort of fits at time times. But... Uh, I, I don't know, it's, is giving somebody a nickname the same as renaming them, and vice versa? Well, I think renaming them is more a matter of you have completely scratched a person's name from your mind, and whenever you refer to that person, you refer to that person by the name you have chosen for them. That's a good point. So what you're saying is it depends on how much it sticks, the name sticks. I think it also has a lot to do with intent. True. Like, like, well, I call Joe Skurb. It's just because that's just how I was introduced to him. It's more nickname than a renaming. But calling Gamma Gamma, that has a lot of intent behind that. Yeah. Yeah. Because, that, like, I mean, we're not talking about the third letter of the Greek alphabet. We're talking about a character from Red vs. Blue who was uh, very <laughs> deceitful in the kind of way that Gamma was deceitful to us. You know, there's a lot to say for renaming 
even in a in a positive light that if you um, it used to be a native in some native tradition that if you did something amazing they would somebody would give you a name. Yeah, you got a you got a new name to go by. Mm hmm. And it, it was a to do with what you did. Right. And it was considered a high honor. It was and you were known then as this new person who did something amazing and it was such a wonderful gift to receive from somebody, especially somebody you respected or cared for it or or loved or something like that. In the reverse of that, I'm not sure if they gave bad names, but what we're talking about, giving somebody a name that is the embodiment of how epic fail you are, that has the same amount of power as giving somebody a positive name. And that's, it's really intense. When we actually did that as sort of a safety measure one time, because we used to have this guy that, if no matter what, if it was something as small as a candle or an incense stick, he would find a way to set himself or something else on fire. And we call him Danger Boy for a reason. But it's, we, we started calling him that because... We noticed that, yes, it was accidental, but he also wasn't being particularly careful about it. And that was something that actually kind of jolted him into saying, okay, I need to really start paying attention where I wave my big sleeves. Now, here's a question. Um, I know it's not necessarily a renaming, but what if you change the connotation of somebody's name? Because I think this podcast might have single-handedly changed the connotation of Silver Ravenwolf from a good to a bad. No, no, I wouldn't say Silver Oh, no, that happened years ago. Now, now, Kelly Mays. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you made it bad, then you rescinded that. So I don't know. Oh, we can make it bad again. We can do it. Yeah, but you can do it. <laughs> it was different levels of enthusiasms in both acts as well. But when we, like, when everyone here says... Uh, Silver's name, we say it with so much disdain and stuff like that. It really is almost changing the connotation, no? Yeah, but PCP didn't do that. <laughs> that that's Ooh, actually happened. just on the bandwagon with that one. Yeah. You know, actually, okay. come to think about it, I've gotten some nicknames for living through stupid stuff I've done. I, I think what Amanda's trying to bring up is the point of when that happens, though. Whether we right. did it or not. The idea of the connotation being changed, but keeping the name the same. Well, I got a niece, and I know some people that when you describe them, you describe them by using their name. Because they're just so... Whatever, that the word that now describes them is what their name is. And I, I think that's sort of ties in with that, because at a certain point you just sort of re-break it in in a new way, creative way. That's not always a good thing. Is what you're saying there similar to the fact that I, there are, there's been a couple of times when I've used someone's name as a verb, as in oh my god, he just AJ drew all over the message board. Yes. Gotcha. Basically, yeah. Yeah, but they deserve that. <laughs> <laughs> and there were even actually goats mentioned. That was the really scary thing. Oh, man, I really don't want to know about this now. But you're thinking about it. <laughs> I, I kind of have the same question as our chat room. Who the hell is AJ Drew? Oh, Lord. Well, Apparently it involves goats. <laughs> Well, no, it didn't involve goats at first, but it, it kind of did later, and there, there was a couple of jokes in that. But um, Okay, let's use a different example that could be considered somewhat comparatively. Um, I could have just as easily said, oh, crap, he just Christian dayed all over the chat board, all over the message board. Don't mention his name three times, he'll show up. <laughs> yeah, but you, get, you get my drift, you get my drift. Yeah. I could have, I could have, I could have said the same thing. In fact, I've heard a couple of other people also, more or less, kind of turn his name. They, they did a Joss Whedon with language. They turned his name into a verb. I 
I got an idea. We should try that in the bathroom. You know the one where you turn the lights off and say the name and circle around and all that? How about we not do that? How big is your bathroom? It only works with social media, by the way. <laughs> it, has to, it has to pop up on his Google alert. <laughs> then he'll appear. I still want to know how big your bathroom is. <laughs> I kind of think I'd prefer to have uh, Bloody Mary show up. And- <laughs> Let me think about this. Hey, Bear, do you think you were renamed? What? Do what you that? think? I think your dad, like, we've joked about this, but your dad renamed you in that context, eh? Kind of, sort of ish. Hey, I think that's the first instance of a Canadian A on this show ever. <laughs> Score! Yay! I'm pretty sure I've said it before. Woo! Well, this is the first time we've noticed it during a live recording. How about that? (laughs) (laughs) That's cool, eh? (laughs) Okay, okay. (laughs) But no one says a boot. It doesn't happen. No. Uh, Actually, I had a teacher that was from uh, Alberta that did say a boot. Well, that's because they're from Alberta. Yeah, it's an Alberta thing. Yes. Yeah, that's the Tennessee of Canada. Don't worry about it. (laughs) Nice. Now you guys keep trying to give us that province. I'm not sure we should take it. <laughs> Are you serious, Dave? You can have Quebec too if you want. Oh, we don't Nobody want wants Quebec. Nobody wants Quebec. Oh God, no! It's just I live in Quebec already, so, so somebody else can invade them. They can get I'm pretty like sure Denmark Quebec comes to my island every year. I don't <laughs> want to deal with them anymore. There are some really nice ones. Don't get me wrong. But the rest of Canada tips better. It's news. It's all French. Look, Quebec. Oh, God, don't make me tell that story. <laughs> they don't want to hear that. <clears throat> Shall we go back to names now? Quebec. It's a bad name to have. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, never name your child Quebec. Got it. Unless you really, really, really hate it. And then it'll leave you, or at least try. <laughs> it, it'll petition to leave to divorce its parents at least five times before they're 18. So wait, now when teenage angst, we can say quit being a Quebec? <laughs> it works. Perhaps it's Murphy. But the problem is, is when they turn 18, they just wind up living with their parents till they're 30 anyway. <laughs> I am sure our Quebec listeners probably say, like, 15 cuss words right now. <laughs> well, it's okay. As long as they're all in French, we're not going to know. <laughs> the guy well, cuss- most well, of them, like, pretend can't. that they don't understand English, so that all works. <laughs> yes, we do have a listener in Quebec. He sent us hate mail when we started bleeping out all the cuss words in the post-produced version. That's how we know we have a listener in Quebec. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Last- we start bleeping. We might not have him anymore. <laughs> Viva la Molson. <laughs> Names. Why the fuck? Why, why, God damn it, I should never let Scurvy <laughs> edit the show notes. You should never <laughs> let Scurvy edit the show notes? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Scurvy should not be allowed to edit show notes anymore. <laughs> okay. So, so back to, we're getting back to names and identity, the, the, the whole identity thing. And we're going to loop all the way back to Otherkin, back from the beginning of the episode. Um, Otherkin people who cannot let go of their identity. People who are borderline failing to live life, failing to live a normal life. People that, by normal psychological standards, might need psychological help. That's how obsessed they are with their identity. You rang? Hi, Naria. <laughs> <laughs> so, Naria, in order for the, in order for you to receive psychological help, first I need to make a name for whatever it is you have. That's not very nice. <laughs> no, but it sounded good. They have a name. It's called Disassociative Identity Disorder with Coyotes. <laughs> Yep, yep, yep. <coughs> Sorry. 
insert obligatory coyote joke here. Moving along. <laughs> yes. Um, so should they let it go? Should they let it be added to their current life? Or what is the line they should be drawing between insanity and sanity on this obsession with identity? Um, can I throw in two cents here? Only two. That, okay. Well, I think this might only be a two cents, maybe only a one. But uh, me and Amber have had this discussion whenever we were still living back in Clarion of the idea of balancing your spiritual life and your normal life. Now, the thing is, is can you completely live your spiritual life and live your pay-the-bills life, I will call it, and still be able to do that. Um, I know, I'm sorry about the ums. I think there are certain jobs out there that you can sort of cross over as long as it's not too prevalent. Um, no offense, Naria, uh, going to work in a furry costume may not work. Um, it, it just doesn't really, you know, especially if you work at Walmart or Kmart, they, they probably look down on that. But Why is that no offense to Naria? Naria, have you ever showed up to work in a furry costume? I don't even have a furry costume. Okay. okay. Brandon. <laughs> okay, you're not a furry. I, Does lots a- of dog and cat hair count? Because <laughs> I, I could be there. Wrong. Okay, because I, I could be there, but I didn't know the protocol. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've done that more than once. <clears throat> but there are certain ideas that you can take with you um, to work and how you deal with other people and wearing your bling uh, may or may not be okay, depending on how big your bling is. It's one of those things that, yes, you can mix the two, just depends on how much it interferes, I guess, is my one cent of thought there in a very long, drawn-out way. I think we actually covered this partially way back in our um, Pagan Therapy episode. I think it was 108 or something like that. Where it was, are you functioning? Do you go to work and say that they have to call you by your, what they? Lord Moonbeam. Yeah, do do they have to call you Lord Moonbeam? Will you just settle for Moonbeam? Like, can, can you get along in normal social interactions? It doesn't mean, are you completely at home, or do you feel completely comfortable, or anything like that. It's, can you? Are you physically capable of having a social life that doesn't consist of people who do nothing but play EverQuest, and The Sims, and anything like that? Can you go out to a bar and talk to somebody? Can you go and walk down the street and and have a conversation? Can you work and interact with the public in an acceptable manner? Now, that doesn't say being completely proper, but it's do you know when is the right time to talk about the fact that you think that you are an angel sent to protect the the young ones, or do you tell everybody that you run across because you're in such a state of crisis in figuring out who you are? If you're in a state of crisis and you need to tell everybody, then I, I think you might need to look at that a little closer. Mm-hmm. And- Miles, what was the guy's name that you knew... And I think it was in um, Colorado that you had to call him by every single portion of his self-given title. It was actually in Maryland. And okay, my bad. Yeah, well, it's okay. And I'll 
use his name here. I don't know if I doubt he's listening. He's probably moved on to other interests now. Um, his name was was two words long. You had to use both of them. You could only ever call him Mitheru Valvontir. You couldn't call him Myth. You couldn't call him Mitheru. You had to say Mitheru Valvontir. Both names in full. Or it didn't count. Because you're tight. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, one thing I've seen some, some other can do, and it works good for them as a coping strategy to get themselves functional, is make a contract with themselves. And outline the boundaries of, this is what's acceptable social behavior, and this is what we'll do in private. Going off of Miles real quick of calling somebody by their full name. Most of the time in work situations, it goes from Brandon to Cadence to Dunce or just B. I do not know how many times in how many different places I've been that it just gets shortened to B. But the idea of not responding in a workplace to a unless you say their entire full name yeah, no that doesn't work for me that's unprofessional um, well i mean there are inappropriate shortenings of the name or there there's times when shortening somebody's name can make it uncomfortable but a the thing that gets me is usually as you're growing up, the only time somebody f used your full name was when you were in trouble. Mm-hmm. I actually had one Names experience. And it's a very random topic, but it was entertaining at least. We had four Josephs in the same class. <laughs> so everybody got divided up into last names or... Well, you got Joe, Joey, Joseph, and a last name. <laughs> that works. It's yeah. kind of interesting. I, it was the first time in my life I ever actually had to... One, I was Joey in that situation. I actually had to tune out Joe. That was uh, interesting. Well, it can make it so much... Because it can be really, really confusing if you've got several people with the same name. I, it's You wouldn't think Heather would be that common of a name. But last count, I knew like 14 of them just in sort of like an immediate regular contact sense. That's one of the reasons that I use, you know, the nickname Snooze, aside from the fact that it fits. It's an homage to, you know, to Emmy and a couple of other things. It fits on several levels. It's just plain less confusing, especially since two of them are my relatives, and I'll be damned if I'll ever be confused with either one of them. Hmm. <laughs> I'm thinking about Dave's analogy of, or example of, going back with the other kin. I don't, I can see where that would work, but I wonder, I can also see where people would say that's crossing a line, and that's just having a problem and not addressing it. Does that make sense? Like, I can see where it would really work, and it'd be like, you know, then you do have something going on there, but I can also see where somebody would go, eh, if you have to do that, that's kind of worrisome. I think that's what I'd like to call a workaround. That saying, yeah, there's something up. Um, this is what I can do to get by, so... I'm going to do this for now until something better presents itself, till I learn about it a bit better, till whatever. Yeah, that's why I said I can, I can kind of see both sides of it. That's, that's a border. That really is a borderline thing. Mm -hmm. So I can see it working very well, but I can also see where... 
you, know, you can worry about it. And I think it, I think it really all goes back to the functionality, like, or the is your quote unquote other half telling you that you have to make um, a altar out of dismembered animal parts and paint the hey. wall with their blood? Hey, that's fun. Well, okay, I don't do the blood part, but the rest of it, you know. If you guys well, I'm, I'm talking shit. like <laughs> I'm talking like full limbs, like still bloody limbs, like cut, cutting them up. I'm not talking about bones and fur and well, uh, yeah, because that's kind of yeah, that's, impra- that's kind of impractical if nothing else, you know, flies. Yeah. So is it you know is it telling you that to mutilate things or? Is it one of those things where your quote-unquote other half just has a hard time with what's considered social norms? Why can't you have relationships of casual sex and not have meaningful relationships? That makes sense to the other you. It's kind of one of those things where it kind of crosses the line, but it's not really causing immediate danger. It's not really so... I think it really all goes back to the functionality the health of it. Sounds like uh, interesting, re- interesting uh, related listening is uh, stuff you should know how schizophrenia works. Yes. Go back to episode 108. That too. <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> My definition of functional still consists of am I capable of bringing home the bacon? Yeah, but if you can go to work, but you still have to have a unavoidable desire to mutilate animals and, <laughs> and paint the walls with their blood as an altar... I don't. I don't no longer count that as completely functional. I don't know. Like going, like like having an uncontrollable urge to go everywhere in just a robe and <laughs> underneath. I mean, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> well, I mean, that's depends the on the funny weather. Thing about functional. I mean, functional doesn't necessarily mean it's working right. Well, it's like the. the the best example that I've ever seen of anybody was this chick that would ba- would say that she couldn't go into work today because well, she thought she billed herself as a dragon that just accidentally got stuck in human skin. And um, she would feel that she couldn't go into work today because the Earth's magnetism was affecting her too much and she wouldn't be able to move and all she would do is sleep in the way that dragons do, quote unquote. So she just stay home from work, um, or anything else that she didn't really want to do. So I never really credited her much with as, as much dealing with a possibly conflicting set of mental or emotional or psychological directives as I did having a, had just having something going on that she really refused to deal with. Yeah, I didn't actually. Well, I've met the gentleman. But we had a guy at work that, on a completely different note, had to preach the word of God no matter where he went. Um, and in a business that says no um, soliciting, yeah, no soliciting. Um, they ended up having to let him go because of it, but. You know, even if no matter what path you are, there's a certain place in time. I mean, if your path is to go out and, you know, preach your word and you must do it to everybody you come to, well, that causes a lot of issues for work, especially if they have a no soliciting policy. And also, on the other hand, if you have some weird religion that, let's say, only 
you know, one race of people is true people and everybody else is evil and should be exterminated, you can't really go around killing people or just treating people badly because they are a of a di different e ethnicity. I can't even talk tonight. I'm sorry. Um, because your faith says those are lower than you. And we actually get a handful of people like that and it worked, not necessarily ethnicity, but they look down on you because you are doing what you're doing. Um, but, you know, that's that's their mental, you know, you're, you're below that them because of their beliefs. And that's... No. Sorry. <sighs> okay, I'm done. Sorry. But in all fairness, I do know some. I do know somebody who doesn't out and out boom identify. I'm another kin, but he speculates that something like that would explain a lot of uh, kind of unusual health problems that he has, and some and a couple of odd phobias that he has. And it's kind of more along the lines of, well, actually, that would make more sense than just that I'm you know got that many random things connected, and. Again, his main thing is the phobias. But he, like you were talking about earlier, functionality, he works on them. And if he finds that he can't cope with them in the way that he'd be expected to as a quote-unquote normal or regular person, and I apologize for using uh, you know, a really vulgar term like normal on here for, uh, to our sensitive listeners. I have but, you know I was called normal the other day. You introduced Dude, yourself I am so normal. sorry. Do you need a group hug? Yeah. Group hug. Okay, cool. Everybody, group hug. Group hug. Group hug. Group hug. Group hug. Just let him breathe. <laughs> but it's, he's, he's gotten some, if he can't be expected or he can't feel like he can cope in the way that you might expect him to, he's kind of sat down and come up with ways to do it. Uh, he's got this trick he does with rubber band, moving rubber bands back and forth on the fingers of one hand that somehow seems to work. And he explained it to me one time, and it had to do with having a different number of fingers on that hand or digits than he felt like he was supposed to, and some kind of a, a break in focus thing. But it works for him. As long as it works... Muzzle tough. It's not a disability if you use it to your advantage. Mm-hmm. I had that discussion about ADHD a while ago. All ironically, the uh, topic of entertainment came up quite a bit with that. I'm moving along. Well, this is where we get to Scurvy's topics, and he wanted to talk a lot about Hinduism. I don't really, well, I'd rather not, but yeah. Well, we could always skip over it. Well, actually, I, I've been studying, starting to study it off and on, and I don't even know where to begin on this one. Okay, now, we've, we've heard the term reincarnation used quite a bit, right? Yes. Okay, it's like the whole basis of the other Kim thing. It's just, it makes a phenomenal, really, 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 really awesome backbone now. <clears throat> and this is based off of what I read. So, I mean, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm getting it wrong, please let me know. But, uh, from what I've read, you go up and down the chain base, and I almost don't want to say based on your good deeds or your bad deeds, but how well you're doing your station or your job in life for the whole karma and all of the fun stuff there. You talking about Dharma? Yeah, we go. Thank okay. you. I'm brain farting right now. I don't move words from written to audio very well, but hey, let's not go there. But, uh, Long and short of that cycle is, though, it's to achieve this whole oneness with God. Oneness with the universe, however you want to call it. Okay. Now that I'm thoroughly dist distracted, can we move along? 
still your topic, Scurve. Ah, okay, maybe I'll read the show notes. Are other kin's entities that normally do not incarnate on this plane? Cunning so, dragon kin? <laughs> yeah, we go. Let's bring that one up. Oh, wow. Dragons. Why would they be here? Because they're emo. And everybody else got tired of them, so they kicked them down here. <laughs> okay, I'll buy that. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> okay, maybe, maybe. okay, let's go. Let's go off a tangent here. We haven't had enough any ta- er, any entertainment, so I'm gonna provide some. What if they're being so emo that they're being kicked down here to learn some humility? Ooh, that is bringing back a topic from an hour ago. Hey, well, I mean that does kind of fit a lot. A lot of. You know, I look at a lot of them feel that they're either down here to A, server purpose, B, as a jail slash prison sentence, or C, because they're on vacation. And that learning humility thing kind of lines up with a lot of people. They combine, you know, the theory that they're down here because of a prison sentence combined with anything they dig up out of their subconscious, whether it's real or not. And they piece it all together. So I'll buy that. Actually, I think maybe a work release program. Work release. <laughs> <laughs> if you look around, if, a, if, you, if, you, if you're a dragon on another plane and all that stuff, hopefully you got some skills that could be of use here. Like stomping on things? I don't know. Maybe not sucking at life. Maybe that's, yeah. where, maybe that's where politicians come from. Dragon-specific skills and human-specific skills don't really match up. We're getting fire, stomping on things. <laughs> and we get from the chat room an arsonist? <laughs> <laughs> come on, I'm just throwing ideas out there. Work with me on this. We're trying, we're trying. Didn't you usually say, okay, here's a theory, shoot it full of holes? Oh yeah, but help me prop it up first. I'm trying to pull, still trying to pull this out. <laughs> <laughs> details, details. Yeah. I work with a. I just realized this. I work with another kin. I'd pretty much say ninety nine percent sure. Really? Damon. Sorry, bleep that out. Um, we're live. Good job. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> I, out there, pretend you never heard that. Okay. <laughs> Um, but, um, I'd say definitely demonic, um, but not in the, you know, rape little children and kill people way, more like, I'm going to cause trouble. Uh, and he definitely enjoys causing trouble. So, impish. Yeah. You know, just suggesting things that would definitely get people into trouble if they try to do it, or a very good possibility of doing things that are to get them into trouble. But I was thinking, there are probably other kin, actual other kin out there that have physical, or not physical, but um, attributes that would actually work quite well in certain job descriptions. I mean, there's certain beings out there that are good at healing, thus they go into medical professions, um, fighting, becoming soldiers, or police officers, um, you know, just, or even Elvin, um, and then going into something, dealing out, being out in the wilderness, uh, or just, you know, liking to be out in the woods. So, there's Something going along with scurvies. I had to run out and grab a quick snack, so I didn't hear all of his thing. I apologize. Oh, that's okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly disjointed right now, so we're okay. all good. I'm not that bad at it. Or, I'm, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm probably just as bad as you, if you can't tell by my speech patterns. Um, Dave's just upset I wrote in sentence fragments again. Well, no, it's kind of like Brandon has a hard time talking if he doesn't have a detailed outline, and De- Scurvy writes a detailed outline that he has a hard time translating. You guys need to work together on this somehow. <laughs> There's an outline? I haven't seen the outline yet. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> it's the same place you put it every week. <laughs> I know. I need to just add him to the show notes. Not that he'll actually look at it anywhere. Here's yeah, well. Harry. <laughs> but <laughs> See, here's another one though. I mean, so, so, so let's, let's say someone's down here with a task to do. Would they be aware of it? I suppose it Maybe. depends on what the task is and why and everything else. I still believe that everybody has has something to do down here. Uh, everybody that you meet. Now that could possibly just being in the right place at the right time, driving you know ten miles underneath speed limit so that somebody doesn't get hit, or you're late and miss somebody, or you meet somebody, or you know that that is your purpose in life. It might be ten minutes or something that's not even connected to you, but there is a reason for you being here. Okay, I'm done. Oh, yeah, and a random piece of trivia. I remember something I read a while ago. Uh, what was that? It was uh, off of Hindu mythology. It was, uh, Krishna was talking to someone and said, do you see that beetle over there? And the person said, yeah, and, and Krishna said, that beetle used to be, and I can't remember the deity's name, but apparently in the Hindu context, uh, the position of a deity is also some is kind of like an office, and people just sort of pass in and out of it or something. I don't know. Hmm. Actually, that's kind of depressing. So I guess if you went from a deity down to a dung beetle, that's to really screwed something up. Well, go ahead. Hey, a dung beetle could have a fun life. I was going to say, dung beetles are actually extremely, extremely useful animals that don't do any harm to anything. That puts them way ahead of a lot of things. That actually, they're, I actually elevate them kind of high. I guess it'd make them more useful than some people I know. Mm. When you think about it, if they, since they actually take care of a job that nobody else wants, it's um, there's a lot of things in that have to do with the idea of karma that the more you lower yourself the more you elevate yourself so they'd actually be pretty high up there the ones I got in the backyard are great man they're my buddies they help me clean up awesome hey, now here's a disclaimer about me going off the deep end okay and before you think this is completely strange I want you to keep this in mind the next time you're in Walmart I honestly think most people are the reincarnation of the chickens and the cows we kill for our fast food. I mean, like, way too soon. Okay, someone shoot that full of holes for me. Because I'd really like not to believe this. 15 Action News. There's a soul shortage in the human race. We need to fill them up. Bob, what's the latest news? Well, Congress here on a celestial plane has decided to use the souls of cows and chickens to fill the, the quota. <laughs> well, on the same, on the, if you wanted to get really ticky about it, sacrificing yourself so that someone else can live, if you look at the Native American view of animals taken for food, and, you know, the classic view, would elevate you way higher when you came back to be reincarnated if it was supposed to be a constant upward moving ladder. Theoretically, that would be people. I'm dubious about that. I, I kind of think that there's several people that could be elevated if they were being reborn as dogs. But that's just me. So I'm not sure I can shoot that full of holes as much as I could say that the, okay, first of all, Dude, you're going to make me go to Walmart? Just try it up here on Redneck Night. <laughs> Serious, if you're, if you're ever up here around that, I will take you to, well, we won't have to go any farther than the parking lot. Dude, Actually, I, live I, I live 15 minutes away from Lowe's Motor Speedway. We we got, we got some, mm. we got, we got some Walmart <laughs> thing going on. Okay, that, that crazy people in Walmart website... It averages a contribution from somewhere within a 50-mile radius of me on an average about once every 26 minutes. And there's a Walmart only about five minutes away from that speedway. 
Yeah, so it even picks up the it even picks up the exhaust fumes. Okay, I'm, I owe you a hug this Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a weird. I'm not really sure I can blow a hole in that as theory, far, though. As far as people being the reincarnation of the cows and chickens used in fast food, I think the implication you're going for is the um, blasé, no imagination. Um, um, sheeple, yes. Sheeple, yeah. Attitude. Um. I don't think it's so much they reincarnate from cows and chickens into people with no brains, as much as the chemicals used in used in the meat that's used in the fast food continues to have its effect on the brains of the people who consume that meat. I was going to say that I have known some very intelligent and very creative people that have worked at Walmart. The problem is, is the corporate um, atmosphere just numbs people. So maybe an hour outside after they get out of work, they're they're normal. They're they're everyday functioning human beings with great ideas and great goals. But while they're there, they become zombies. Zombie like. Right. Um, I think the key word you know said there was that they work. Mm-hmm. People of Walmart.com. Yeah, Scurvy was mainly denoting the people that just go there and wear stupid things. Mm. Well, I have, and I confess, done this intentionally, gone to, not Walmart, but places like that, in funny clothes just to be seen in funny clothes, just to brighten somebody else's otherwise mundane existence. Call it a public service. <laughs> Okay, we're back to that humility definition again there. Yeah. <laughs> there I equate go. it more with being like aliens, the, you know, like in um, Hitchhiker's Guide people. to the Galaxy and uh, Ford Prefect is talking about aliens, spoiled alien kids buzzing the planet, that ha- a planet that hasn't experienced space travel, just to mess with their heads. All right. I need to reread that book. So here's a question for you, or a theory that... I guess Bear and I were um, throwing around talking about. So, you know a lot of the mentally handicapped people who, I guess, it's a whole different, it's not like ADD, whatever, even though some people call that a mental handicap. I'm talking the ones that can't completely speak, and you get yeah. like such a, an energy from them, like they're so full of a different kind of energy. We were kind of contemplating if maybe that was a being who tried to come down into our level, but just there was too much power and too much mental capacity for the human body. So that's how it acts out, is they appear like they're actually um, not as smart or not as capable when they're actually a heck of a lot smarter. They're going too fast. I've always seen, I know what you're talking about, and I've known a couple of people that i I got. I had the same impression of. I chalked it up more to a. It's not that. I run into a lot. I've run into quite a few people who are considered mentally handicapped or you know autistic or something along those lines. That it was really more of a disconnect between the stimulus coming into their brain and the way their brain processed and processed it and the way they expressed it. And if if you want to use as a kind of a, kind of a extreme example, um, idiot solvents or autistic solvents. It really, there's been a couple of them that I've, people like that that I've been around that I really did get the feeling that the problem simply was their brain was taking in way, way, way more stimulus than it was really prepared to deal with and that was just the stuff that eked out through the cracks. Exactly. That's That's kind of what I think Bear was talking about, and that's kind of what I gathered from it, too, was one of those, there's too much going through their brains, they're taking in everything, possibly even multidimensional and stuff like that, Mm -hmm. you know, it's all coming in at once, and they can't handle it the same way, so. Yeah, it's an overload. Yeah. 
Now, I want to preface this. When I was talking about this, I wasn't saying all mentally challenged people are like are that. I was just saying some are like that. In my by my no, no, yeah, for sure. I just wanted to put that yeah. up. Some people say that all those those people are touched and they're perfect. No, no. <laughs> some are just, well, that's, just mentally challenged. They might be, but you still don't necessarily let them go around setting fire to themselves. I mean, there, there's always an element of practicality to be had there, no matter what you think someone's, where you think they're at or what their origins are or you know, how you evaluate or diagnose them, there's still always got to be an element of practicality there. There's um, two ideas there. One is possibly the mentally impaired could be a soul coming into the body that fried something coming in, either too powerful or just did not take right or something along those lines. And also going off of Scurvy's idea of the the reincarnation and moving up and moving down, maybe humans are sort of taken out of that equation, whereas we are not necessarily moving up or moving down, we are just sort of there, and other things can come in and go out, and you have different souls... Um, like if you have an animal soul or a dragon soul, elf soul, fairy, whatever um, that comes into a human body uh, or even the idea of a dung beetle or something along those lines of moving up and down knowing some of the people I've met uh, there's a good possibility that human beings in general are just somehow out of that equation especially with how much we do not coexist with nature. We live outside of nature. I don't think that necessarily means humans are out of the equation. I just think that means that they have the self-awareness of a bag of eggplants. <laughs> I Good like visual. that. Good visual. I don't know. I'd, I'd kind of have to go that way, too, because it's... I've met... I've got quite a few animals that have come in and out of my life that we were fairly certain were reincarnations of animals that I knew before. In fact, I've got, you know, LJ sitting in front of me right now, and there's no way I can prove it, but I, it's more and more people keep telling me that meet her that knew Joe go, oh my God, it's Joe. But I'm fairly certain that one of the reasons I don't always relate particularly well with a lot of the people around me I think I may have been an animal more times than I've been a human. And it would it's it's kind of along the same lines of, okay, there's a couple of things that would make more sense there. By the same token, a lot of the people that I do seem to mix well with and not have to constantly explain myself with and gel pretty well with are frequently people that I look at and I see some type of overlay that has something to do with an animal personality or an animal way of an animal way of thinking or mental pattern when I'm around them, and that may be complete, you know, absolute bollocks, but it does seem it does seem to be something that crops up fairly frequently, and it would explain a lot. I don't know. I'd, I'd have to. I'd have to say that I don't think humans are necessarily out of the loop. Of course, I don't see. I don't see it as being a constantly ascending ladder type thing either. I see it more as a. Okay, this time around we're going to do this because we need to experience this, and this time around we're going to do that because we maybe need to pick up a little bit of this. Uh, more, I, th I see it more as being a cross training thing than I do an upwardly mobile ladder type thing. As far as your personal development being augmented by being being reincarnated into different situations. Here's some here's some I was kicking around a while ago mostly because I haven't pissed anybody off recently. Sufficiently as of the Slacker. time of this writing. <clears throat> Is it possible that prophets are other kin? 
that actually makes a fair amount of sense. The question is which type? Yeah. Warren Jeffs or Jesus? What was that? Warren Jeffs or Jesus? What kind of prophet? I'd probably say more like Jesus. You know, Jesus, Muhammad. I, call, I sometimes classify uh, Condi in that category, too. Well, when you're talking Jesus as the prophet, if you look by, by Christian mythology, Jesus was considered God in some denominations. So Just technically God. he would be other kin? Yeah, so technically he would be the other kin. A God kin. He's Jesus kin. <laughs> What it comes down to it is there's so many variables when it comes to human existence. You have, you know, the people that will say, yes, that they, to have some kind of ability, they have to be of another plane of existence. Then you'll have, okay, but to have these instincts, they have to be more animal, but it, could it just be heightened brain function? Could it be a different spirit? Could it just be uh, a mixing of different souls? Could it be just experience? Could it be you're just very observant and you're not understanding how you're putting everything together? There's so many different variables. Is it possible? Sure, but I don't think that it's worth dissecting necessarily. I don't know. I, I thought about it. And it Definitely something to kick out there at least once. If nothing else, maybe 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 we can come back to this one forty five episodes. <laughs> I would say sometimes yes, sometimes no. Um it just just depends on how they get their information. That, and I was also wondering about something else as well. Now, a lot of these, um, much as I hate to say it, the uh, religious wacko cult leaders and all that, what are the odds that... <clears throat> okay, would a religious wacko cult leader, could, you, could anyone here see that being an other kin that just sort of didn't bake right? It's like, yep. yeah, you're drawn to the right thing and all that stuff, but, uh, yeah. I don't know, a cult leader, uh, that that doesn't sound like something that didn't fake right, it just sounds like something that's nasty. Because a cult leader has to be able to make people follow him. And let's also not be playing the game of underestimating humanity here. Mm-hmm. It goes back to the whole profit thing. It could be a whole variety of things. Is it possible? Yes, but it's not worth dissecting and saying this is and this is not. Yeah. Oh, well. I like the idea. What if a prophet or a cult leader or a cult, a religious figurehead is an other kin not of an animal or like that, but is an other kin composite of several thousand people. Well, one soul that has been incarnated several thousand times. Sure. Yeah, it would explain the wisdom. <laughs> well, to take that to an absurd tangent is it's me um if a person is the other kin of another human like if i'm the other kin of fred blogs of cincinnati so you're fred kin <laughs> <laughs> <Freakin>. <laughs> <laughs> that's freaking impossible <laughs> <laughs> for those of you out there human is considered a kin type in the other kin community. Yes, you can be an other kin human of other human, kin. which seems kind of redundant. Yeah, it does seem redundant, <laughs> but yes, it does work. That's like if you work all day in a white lab coat with black slacks, and you come home and you feel most comfortable wearing a white lab coat with black slacks. 
I would comment, but I've actually known people just that have done that. No, me too. But they normally die very shortly after they retire. So, uh, <laughs> okay. so after they meet you. So human kin, that's like, on one hand you get an otaku kin who's a Harry Potter kin, on the other hand you get a Daniel Radcliffe kin. <laughs> I think we managed to avoid otaku kin this episode. <laughs> Wow. Not anymore. <laughs> it's just funny because I have a picture at the top of the show that it's a taco kid as a taco that shits ice cream. Oh, hey. Yeah. <laughs> evil, evil man. Okay, well, let's, let's insert the obligatory rant here. Okay. Google Plus. Otaku. <laughs> You are probably not the reincarnation of... Inuyasha? Anything you saw on TV or in the movies. Harry Potter. Ted Saiga. Or in a video game. Sephiroth. <laughs> One, you. Super Mario. You are probably not the reincarnation of a deity. Freya. Asus. Morgan. Someone was explaining to me the other day how Isis is a loving mother. Specifically with those words. I thought you'd appreciate that. Well, oh, yeah. Did you punch them? Not yet. I'm the reincarnation of a companion cube. <laughs> he, he really is. And I gotta Google what the hell a companion cube is. Uh, it's from a video Portal. Game. Yeah. God damn it. It's from Portal. You can also find them in Minecraft mods. <laughs> you say it, I'm gonna be really annoyed. I wouldn't, I wouldn't tarnish PC to be with that. Come on, man. Yes, he would. This was a triumph. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Did I say that out loud? <laughs> Say what? Didn't hear a thing. <laughs> Alrighty. Amber needs a rubber band shot at her. Pew, pew, pew! Get out the mongoose. But, uh, let's see. What, what, are, the other, what are the other favorite, uh, famous Otaku Ken rants? <sighs> if your wings hurt, please still go to work. <laughs> if you're going to call off a of work, please don't call off a of work because your wings hurt. Tell them you have a migraine. Tell me, you tell me you got the craps. Tell me you got the EMS. <laughs> Even if you're a guy, it's better. <laughs> yes. Actually, no. If you're a guy and I happen to be the one taking out the phone, please tell me you're calling off the work because your wings hurt and you're a fairy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, please. I'll put that on speakerphone. <laughs> you will brighten my day. And if by chance we have not dissuaded you and you still think that you are Cloud from Final Fantasy, it is not your goal in life to convince your classmates, co-workers, or other family members that they are Tifa, Sephiroth, and other members of Final Fantasy. Keep your neuroses to yourself. Please. <laughs> okay, one of the biggest filters in, in, in life that I believe, and I, I really love using this, is... Can I walk to somebody on the street and explain this to them and them have to get it without an hour's worth of explanation? Okay, that's one of the huge lines for normal I draw. Now, I'll be the first one to admit I'm not exactly normal, but that's where I put the line. It's okay to be abnormal, okay? That's good. We need some color in this world. But there's a difference between being abnormal and kind of weird to what the fuck is wrong with you? Okay, when it goes from oh yeah, that's Fred, he's just kind of weird to, dude, watch out for Fred. No, no, you need to go talk to Fred. He's got some fucked up shit that comes out of his mouth. My bad. <laughs> okay. There, there, there's the line, okay? It's look at it as not so much what you're saying 
but what people are going to say about what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, if the first thing you do when you introduce someone to somebody else is introduce yourself as having sex with dogs, <laughs> you might that become is, a PCP me. That is extra special. <laughs> I was wondering if that was going to come up this episode. Awesome. Good job, Dave. I was I was looking for those memes we haven't covered yet. <laughs> Everyone's, like, unusually quiet. Because it's the other kid episode. You're usually unconscious, so you don't notice. <laughs> oh, like the last one I had, we did, it felt like some escaped from the Large Hadron Collider and lodged itself on my forehead. I mean, it honestly felt like my head was caving in. And that was a re- decidedly weird feeling. I was like, ah, this is what brain hurt feels like. It was like four cubic inches of brain matter just withered out of existence, leaving a hole in my head. And the Better brain hurt than butt hurt. <laughs> True! Hell if your yeah. butt hurt, you gotta fill out the butt hurt report form. Yep. I don't want to hear your bitching until the form's filled out. <laughs> Got to do the paperwork. Concrete enema? Are we going to make people fill that out when they give us hate mail now? That'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that should just be the hate mail tab on the piece of <laughs> site. You just click on hate mail, and it's actually just, it's, it's only a Google Doc that you just fill out. <laughs> awesome. I haven't gotten any good hate mail in a while. Well, that's because... We got compounded with it in, like, the freaking beginning of the month. Yeah, we did. I think they just send it to us on Facebook now. Hence the beginning of the month. (laughs) Like, send it to us in a form we can talk about. Especially people that so want to move this to a public forum. My bad. (laughs) Oh, they can. It's in a public forum now. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, you're, you're, my stance is still this, okay? If you were a dragon in a previous life, awesome. You're here. Let this enhance this life. If you were a wolf in a previous life, awesome. Let it enhance this life. If you do feel the urge to fuck dogs, please don't let that be the first thing you introduce yourself with. <laughs> Hmm. You probably shouldn't mention that at all. <laughs> probably. Just so I would, I would recommend costume play before um, bestiality. Here's my question. I've never heard of somebody being... They're, they're like, I'm a wolf. I'm a coyote. I'm a bear. I'm a dragon. When was the last time you heard somebody say, I'm a platypus? A kangaroo. Oh, sure, someone said it. Hey, I've heard that, so I don't even want to hear that. I get called a raccoon. I got called a raccoon. I was down there at the powwow <laughs> too often. That's not a bad one. No. Yeah, no. but when it's a couple, when it's a couple of pubescent girls pointing at you, giggling, saying you're a raccoon and all that stuff, like. I made a special face. You've been called worse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. At least, I mean, raccoon got skills, man. Think about it. Yeah, it could be worse. It'd be like that time I called you normal. <laughs> Dude, that's just, now that's a load of butt hurt right there. <laughs> no, I, my problem is... Actually, just- though, after a recently sample in a couple other communities and a few other things, I don't really get upset at being called normal anymore. Dude, they make a sigh for that. No, no, no. I mean, actually, it's the first time in my life I've ever been called normal. It really blew my mind. Yeah, and, and this just lets you know how skewed my, my standards are. Yeah. Which thoroughly puts Dave in the category of extra special. <laughs> well, honestly, I think of all of you guys as being... What to me would fit a standard or normal? It's all of these cookie cutter, suit wearing, 
copy carbon copy people running around here or whatever that freak me out because that can't be normal. There's no way that there's no way that much conformity uniformity. Uh, yeah, sometimes out of sheer mindlessness could actually be normal. Well, I was listening to an audio course a while ago on uh, evolution and all that, and part of what it said was what prompted uh, cooperative behavior was inbreeding. Because <laughs> relatives will cooperate with each other because your brother's got 50% of your genes, and, you know, your cousin's got 25%, something like that, and a segment of population just sort of got cut off or got inbred, so everyone's helping their brother. And then it got reintroduced to the population as a whole. So, yes. Taking it from there, if inbreeding's what produced cooperative behavior, then I suppose everybody being a cookie cutter of each other that does exactly the same thing that everybody else does could possibly be an outgrowth from that. And we're just a mutants. I don't see them doing that, though. I usually see them winding up tripping each other up and that sort of thing. I don't... I th I think I've seen people, if I can really, like, kind of push a weird metaphor here, I see more people that have some major oddnesses to their outlines. Like, think about the jigsaw puzzle pieces. Yeah, they're all odd shaped, and they've all got these little funny bits and funny dents and things like that. But they all fit together, and they they find places to fall into kind of a niche and make it work. I'm I'm, I'm going for a type of visual there that probably needs either a substantial amount of alcohol or something illegal to really get a good handle on. But it's floating around up there somewhere. I'll I'll sleep on it. Uh, enough euphemisms in that statement to um, thoroughly make it X-rated. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Does the, the 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 illegal substances thing count as a felony mention? Sorry, Dave. <laughs> Dave left for now. So, He'll be back. We were doing so good. <laughs> All right, somebody speak. I was saying goodbye to Miles. Oh, bye, Miles. That book's too far away for me to read. I was talking, and I did not realize I was on mute, because Scurvy's like, somebody say something, and I was like, okay. Uh, apparently, Google Satellite took a picture of the island the day after the hurricane. So I am currently scanning down Highway 12, looking at how much beach is left and where the road was washed out and how much actual destruction happened. You know, it's sort of amazing. So, side note. And so I've been thinking about what you said about um, the people that you get along with. You can usually see an overlay of animal or, or something like that. I can understand that. I think there's, when I look at people, there's a difference between um, most people and the people I get along with. And it has nothing to do with, with level of sanity or anything like that, but it's, they are just different. They not only have a different feel to them, but they react different to social situations, interpersonal relationships. Whether it's animalistic, I don't know. They, I just know that they're different. Well, uh, speaking on the animal thing, we might as well drag this topic out and be to death before anybody starts thinking about it. I mean, you always wind up with a lot of new agey folks. Let's, let's go with the stereotype of Wiccan here. And they're always like, well, what's your spirit animal? What's your totem animal? And everybody's always trying to find the animal that they're like. I mean, is this a continuation of that? Or how is it different from someone who was previously incarnated as an animal? I don't necessarily think it needs to be different, even if somebody doesn't feel like that's where they're coming from. It 
totemism works differently from individual spirit because totems aren't uh, the totems aren't the spirit of an individual. If you want to, a, a good way to phrase it might be a regular bear walking around would be a bear with a little with a lowercase b. The totem of bear would be bear that's an sort of an essence of everything that makes bear bear and would be a capital B or a proper noun B. And that's probably a really, really lame way to describe it, but it seems to work. I don't know. It, it seems to kind of resonate with people sometimes. It's a, a totem is something you deal with that's like, I don't even want to say avatar because avatar still has a connotation of individualism or person, you know, distinct personality to it. And that's not quite where totem falls into. But I think most of the people that wind up experiencing something like what Amber and I are talking about are dealing with something they relate to on a spirit level that still has an aspect of individual personality or individual separate being to it that would be lowercase b or lowercase d or what you know whichever they're talking about does that make sense mhm yep um it's kind of like uh when i do work with bones and i'm sure snooze that you can understand this there's there's a spirit that may come with the bones that was the animal. That's completely different from what Snooze had mentioned, you know, bear with capital B. When coyote comes, capital C coyote, it's no longer the spirit of a coyote. It is the, if you want to say it's the divine essence of everything that makes coyote coyote. Yeah, if you if you wanted to go into another example, and I'm not sure if I've, I, I think we've brought this up on the show before, but just in case we haven't, um, a hunter, uh, an indigenous hunter, that has a tradition that an, if you live correctly and you hunt correctly with respect, an animal will present itself to you to enable you to feed yourself and your family. You might go out tracking deer. With a little lowercase d, and you'll see, and you would see individual deer. But what comes into play in that concept of an animal sacrificing themselves to a hunter for food is not that it's not a bargain made between a hunter and an individual animal. In that case, you might see a deer with a lowercase d. But what will happen is that deer with an uh, with a capital D, not a deer, but deer, the you know proper noun deer, will manifest in that individual deer with a lowercase d, and make that exchange, make that bargain with you, or present you with that gift. And it's not the individual deer doing it; it's the essence of deer working through that individual deer to accomplish that. And we'll, we'll talk about, they brought up somebody who is incarnated. There's a difference between the, the essence of wolf and everything that wolf represents, and then there is wolf the animal. If somebody is incarnated from the animal, a lot of times they will have the characteristics that the animal would have it's not necessarily oh i'm a wolf so i need to tear into a piece of meat it may be that they really like structure they like working in groups because they like the structure of the group they feel awkward when they're alone and more so than the average person it's more of the traits and behavior qualities that that animal has. Like, beavers are very good at organized chaos. It may look like chaos, but they know exactly where everything goes. And if something springs a leak, they know exactly which stick they can pull out of where and how to patch it within seconds. 
where everybody else would just go, uh. <laughs> On a completely unrelated note, my hand has just been promoted to chew toy for the cat. I see that would be the ch- essence of chew toy with a capital C. And <laughs> <laughs> well, Dusty, that's actually starting to hurt. And then when we talk about totems visiting, um, we'll have spiders. And just because spider has decided that I apparently need it in my life. Every spider that comes around is not gra- the essence of Grandmother Spider. I don't always address them as Grandmother Spider. I don't even think of it. It's usually Grandmother S- Spider, get your children out of my house. However, there are times when um, usually a jumping spider will come and it just feels different. It's the way that it approaches. It's the way that... And it's not to say it's not still just a spider. It's physically a spider. But it acts differently. Or... um, It will... uh, There's been times where even wasps... There's been wasps that will land on me and then they disappear. I will move and then they're nowhere to be found. And I don't mean like... (laughs) Oh, they're outside. They will be in one small room, and then it will disappear. It will no longer be anywhere. And usually that's more of some kind of totem spirit trying to get your attention. That does not mean any wasp that I then after see is a totem spirit trying to get my attention. So it's... I've seen a lot of the the neo pagan, the new age. Every time they see an animal, I saw a squirrel today. That mis- that must mean something. Um, it might mean that you have an oak tree outside and it likes the acorns. Yeah, I don't I think using there's a damn logic thing again. <laughs> <laughs> The squirrel we have in a tree outside likes trying to drop nuts on my head. <laughs> Sometimes they do do that as like a get out of my territory thing, you know. Yeah. yeah. I return to favor occasionally. I'm actually pretty good at hitting them in the dark. <laughs> well, you know, squirrels aren't known to get along with raccoons. Just saying. That's true, man. That's true. <laughs> well, apparently I'm a pretty good blind shot. There you go. Raccoons see good in the dark, too, you know. They're a nocturnal animal. <laughs> so we need to start calling you like Cooney now or something <laughs> Would you like somebody else to bite We got volunteers I like kittens <laughs> I like pop tarts But that be kitten Louis Keys K <laughs> I'm sorry, it just reminded me, we went to, this was, I think over a year ago, we had friends come down, and we went to this Japanese steakhouse up in Nags Head, and when you go to the the stir fry area, and they, they do it on this huge plate, it's a huge show, and the, the one guy, we had children at the table, sitting with another family, and he kept going, Chinese chicken gum, yeah! But he was saying it fast enough that the kids were just like, this guy's weird. We don't know what's going on. Oh, God. It was horrible. Somebody watched way too much Wayne's World. So, see, you just spent ten minutes chewing my finger, so hand. I expect no angry tale. Hey, I got a, I got a segue to actually go back to names topic. Go ahead. Sure. Okay. Multiple amounts of bitching going on right now. Oops, sorry. Okay. Multiple amounts of angstiness going on right now because of Google Plus's names policy. Apparently, I had somebody tell me that they were going to report me. 
because he, and this oddly enough is someone who got very very angry with me on face crack because I have my craft business name up as you know as my name not my given name and they've accused me of everything from trying to hide to being subversive to being dishonest because I don't put my regular name up and like okay, first of all nobody knows me by my regular name everybody knows me by snooze second of all I have the business name up there so people can relate to it. If I wanted to be subversive, I wouldn't be posting which festival I'm going to be at or which vending event I'm going to be at with the address and the time and even possibly my booth number or position on the site map so that people could easily find me. But this thing with uh, Google Plus insisting on names, apparently they actually went ahead and kicked my account out because snooze is not a real is not a real name, so I'm like, okay, why? Should, and there's there's other people that have gotten into this too, uh, <coughs> calls in the pagan community to be public and be out of the broom closet and use your real name online just to, you know, show, hey, I'm not hiding behind a name, quote-unquote, which you've already heard what I think about that. If people, you know, safety first. You know, you can't tear your life apart for somebody else's sensibilities. But I'm kind of sitting here going, okay, who is it for someone else to decide that you can't use a nickname that you've had for decades and um, by the same token, if it's the name, even if it is a craft name or an online ID, if it's the one that people know you by and identify you by, I, I don't see why that counts as being subversive or dishonest to use it. Well, because But apparently course. Google Plus is kicking people off left and right. They uh, kicked off a friend of mine who... She has to stay in the closet, and it, this literally is a question of her life possibly being in danger because of some stuff that, that you know, just some stuff. And uh, they they deleted her account and told her you either use your real name or you will not have one. So it's well, there's a, a few things to keep in mind with uh, Google Plus in particular. First of all, your average inventory, and if you are not a uh, something that they could sell as being a real person. Mm-hmm. You're, you're worthless inventory, so they're not going to waste their resources on you. So well, the way around that is to come up with a alias that sounds like a real name but really isn't. For example, Rob McGee is a Google Plus account. Rob McGee is a name of a program. Well, what, I, what I'm getting at with that, though, the reason that I apparently got booted is not necessarily that Google caught up with it on whatever this filter thing they have. It's because someone reported me mm-hmm. as not being a real person. Yeah, and you could do that on Facebook, too. Facebook has the same exact policy. Yeah, but here's the thing. Nobody bothered to contact me and say, hey, can you prove that this is a nickname that you use? Can you show some ID somewhere or something? They just deleted it. Mm-hmm. So do, do people just get to decide whether or not they approve of your name or your nickname or a pseudonym that you that you might go by quite publicly. Well, you're talking about Google, a company full of socially deficient PhDs that think they know everything. Well, yeah, there is that. I mean, these are the same people who thought putting a, a rape victim in contact with their rapist was an excellent idea. Oh, I hadn't heard that one. Yeah, yeah, that okay. was that was a huge class action lawsuit against them for Google Buzz. Uh, I'm still not I'm not feeling particularly bad about having gotten booted, but at the same time, I, I, I think it's I think it sets a bad precedent. Yeah, but at the same time, excuse me, on the topic of names. The biggest problem that the PNC has with regards to getting news articles published in the mass media mm-hmm. is the fact that very few pagans go by their legal name. And press standards is if they're not using their real name, then you got to treat them as an anonymous source and then 
you got to get multiple sources to corroborate a story and all and that fun stuff. Yeah, and when you've got a group of people that don't believe that the entity you're reporting about or the people you're reporting about actually exist outside of a mental asylum, mm -hmm. that does get kind of... And I understand that, but at the same time... Uh, to me, it, it it comes down to the same argument that there is for being out of the broom closet. If you can do it, great. If you can't, then don't. Uh, if there's another practical element, somebody needs to look at Like, I go by Snooze Hamilton. One of the other reasons that I don't go by Heather Hamilton on a regular basis, other than the fact that, again, nobody freaking knows me by that name. There's a Heather Hamilton that is, lives in North Carolina that is wanted for check fraud, forgery, um, petty theft, and a couple of other charges. And I have gotten her mail, and I've gotten a couple of other things from people that think I'm her. And to me, using the nickname is another way to demonstrate that, no, this is not the same person. Because this person, you know, the chick that's wanted doesn't go by that. It's it's another way to differentiate. At the same time, the long-term solution looks like it's just going to be come up with a pseudonym that looks like a real name but really isn't. Kinda yeah, like but then you got to... Yeah, but then you got to go tell everybody, well, here's the name you need to look for me under and, you know, all that kind of... I'm lazy. <laughs> To me, it's another good reason to use the business name because if I give somebody my business card, portable weirdness is pretty easy to remember. Mm -hmm. And I've got people that have found me on Face Crack after a festival or a notoriety event or something that have gone, oh, yeah, I, yeah, I found you on here. You're good. Absolutely I had no problem finding me either on Face Crack or back when I was on Etsy. And I don't, again, I don't, I don't feel like using a business name should be an issue. And in a way, portable weirdness could be another name for me. I mean, good grief, it fits. <laughs> yeah. Ah. <laughs> uh. So I wonder, can you register businesses on the, the Google Plus or whatever heck that is? You the thing the policy is no. The real way it's done is if you give Google enough money, they will look the other way. Do you know evil? <laughs> Cowards. Why? That's the corporate model. Do no evil. Oh, fun. So much awkward silence. I think it's time for final thoughts. Awesome. Brandon would have a final thought, but he's out smoking. Oh, Brandon's oh. final thought is nicotine. <laughs> My final thought is there's a certain kitten that's about to experience a shower again. <laughs> Don't hold the kitten! My final thought is my microphone might be working, and I'm a dragon! <laughs> Kits to the dragon. My final thought is I thought this whole thing was a whole lot more coherent when we were writing the show notes. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think we were then. <laughs> And that or it was just scurvy thing. type stop. So it, that or else it was just that scurvy was the one that started typing. <laughs> what? Snooze, you see what I gotta put up with? 
No, actually, I can't. I'm I'm only on audio. <laughs> <laughs> it's always better to be a smart ass than a dumbass. Dusty, there's a reason why I'm not breaking you of biting. Because I got people lined up for you. <laughs> hey, bring them down here for Thanksgiving and we'll put them out in the backyard with Bridget. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon, you want to jump on for final thought? Are we waiting for my final thought? Yes. Uh, final thought. Uh, sorry, I'm taking a second to figure out one. Nicknames are fun. Um, or can be very bad. I've had some bad ones. But, yeah, I like nicknames and they help keep people more organized. Or even, not necessarily nicknames, but other names, like using somebody's last name. and That's my final thought. I like them. Okay. Sorry, that was bad. As Brandon apologizes yet again for something he says. <laughs> well, because of, not necessarily for what I say, but for how disorganized and choppy I am right now. Like I said, you're just going to have to learn post-production, and when you're on an episode and is really detached, then I'm going to make you post-produce it, because that's what all the rest of us had to do. Hey, everybody else stopped sucking as soon as I made them do post-production. I've done I post-production. I still Not on yourself. Me. That's the main thing. Once you do post-production on yourself... Yeah, I... Uh that, that's a special form of depressing. <laughs> Don't worry, Brandon. The ums are easy to cut out. I try Actually, to make them very distinct. Sometimes and the ums even help the sentence. Yeah, but that's mostly if you're killing names. Yeah. <laughs> I know, Dave, you, I know you went over that audio that I post-produced and yeah, I did. I remember the raw audio. <laughs> um, um, yeah, um, yeah, um. um. 45 minutes of um. <laughs> About that, that would make a good remix, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I actually left some of them in there. Well, a few, a few of them got left in there just because I said They're grammatically so. required. <laughs> Some of them got left in there because it sort of brought the sentence fragments together. Um, yeah. <laughs> One or two got left in there just because they were dead giveaways of bullshit. I'm sorry. So, moving along. <laughs> Final thoughts. I think my final thought is that sometimes, well, not sometimes, just in general, that taking a craft name should not be to compensate for the lack of self-importance that you feel in everyday life. It's supposed to represent you, not change you into something that you want to be. Score. Score. Do we have any more final thoughts? My final thought is I'd be a dragon slayer, Naria. <laughs> <laughs> I need good company. You is welcome to. Bring marshmallows. Yes. <laughs> the wolves like them. Amanda, final thought? Well, I don't really have one other than I... It pisses me off automatically when someone calls himself Lord or Lady something. I don't take them seriously at all. Well, I don't mind them doing it because it's a good BS filter. 
Point taken. Agreed. However, just when I see it, I just want to hit them. Call them Fire. Mm -hmm. Fire. I, I repeat from earlier, do you have a castle? No? Go away then. Oh my god, a castle! We should make a castle. Is that it for final thoughts? I think so. I, I want to make a castle. Okay. That could be fun. All right, yeah. Cool. Well, next week we'll be building a Lego castle here on PCP. <laughs> <laughs> we have... We have to do that as something when we're very drunk at our wedding. We will pick Lego. Lego castles. Hopefully that's late, late, late into the night after we're, we've all been thoroughly drunk. On the 15th hour of PCP, the Pagan Serenity Podcast, the sun is now rising and we just got Legos. Legos. <laughs> 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 Legos. Alright, well that's it for this week, everyone. We'll see y'all next week. Good night, everyone. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. Bye.